Pray for the Devil 2023 Hello everyone and welcome. Our story starts today at St. Michael's Exorcism School in Boston, Massachusetts, a school created for exorcism by priests, while the nuns only attend to the sick. This girl called Annie is getting lessons here by her professor, and this professor seems to have a certain hostility toward past crimes committed against people who were killed after accusing them of heresy. She also doesn't seem to believe in demons and possession, and considers it as various kinds of mental and personality disorders. She continued her speech on some of the atrocities that took place here, and he stopped her to ask her whether she believed in demon possession or not. She answered that the human mind can create something unexpected to destroy reality, and believe they were under the influence of demon possession. Therefore, the task of doctors and psychologists here was to carefully choose specific people who can be directed to the priest to expel evil spirits of them. The place sounded strange and scary to Annie. She is new here, and as we see here, this patient is almost dead and his condition seems very serious. This child was brought here after reporting that she had convulsions, urinary incontinence, and muscle spasms. But her mother believes she is possessed and the professor's job is to medically treat her, where her state doesn't seem to be demonic possession in her words. As for Annie, she is caring for her and the relationship between them seems to be good. In the professor's office, Annie recounted her tragedy with her mother when she was young. Sometimes, the mother treats her daughter like any other mother with kindness and tenderness. Other times, she treated her daughter harshly and cut her hair violently or even had fits of agitation to knock on Annie's room door violently and hysterically. So the doctor told her that her mother was schizophrenic and that this was the reason. At night, when she was in her bedroom, she went to close the window. She saw not only on the glass, she looked behind her and couldn't find anything. Then she saw a shadow under the door. But when she went out, she found nothing. The next day, while she was in the corridor, she heard a weak voice calling her Annie. Suddenly, when she looked back, she found this girl named Natalie. But is Annie delusional and started showing symptoms of schizophrenia as her mother or this place is actually haunted? Nobody knows. The puzzling thing is that no one can get out of his room. But Natalie arrived here and this is confusing. So Annie took Natalie to her room. And while she went downstairs, she heard the same voice calling her. This place is getting really scary. After entering the lecture hall, she seemed to be scared. So, she sat next to her colleague. The father explained the case which reached the highest level of possession. As she began to eat her own feces and drink her urine. And this is the most dangerous level. But the devil, according to him, never gets bored or tired. And remains clinging to his victim. However, the Lord exists and is stronger than all the rest, and He is the one who protects us if we hold on to Him. When the lecture finished, she went to the library to read a few cases. Her condition at the school augurs nothing good, for one of the most important rules of the school is not to attend exorcism lectures or try to understand this world, because it's the task of a priest only, as I said before. So, maybe she is in trouble for breaking the law. While the father doesn't seem to care, but she should stick to it to protect herself. When she went to look after Clark, things were looking normal. The blood came back into the serum bag, and his skin seemed to emit smoke. But it looked great, as if he wasn't ill. Annie tried to escape, but the door was closed in front of her and she couldn't come out. Oh gosh, what kind of trouble is she in? It's as if her end will come from the devil. On the other side of the building, those in charge know that she was being followed by a devil, but for no obvious reason. It appears that he was provoked by her presence, even moving her to another place when caused her to get rid of him, according to the father. And he wants her to remain here so he can keep an eye on her and work with her. Annie told the professor earlier that her mother told her that the devil didn't want her mother, but that he wanted her because she was one of the soldiers chosen by God. And this may be one of the reasons the father wanted to teach her exorcism. And her relationship with the devil is personal, not just an ordinary one. And this makes her the only female here in this male-only room. The father ordered the first group to head to the Mount of the Hell. 
This case here is under observation and Dr. Peters diagnosed her with idiopathic epilepsy, which turned out to be Natalie. Now is the time to expel the devil from her body. Before entering, the father told them that the devil will shine his light in the deepest recesses of your mind to reveal your deepest secrets and pains, then use them as a weapon to penetrate your soul. Now they must enter and confront the devil. She's a girl on the surface, but her soul is for the devil, so she must be treated as a devil to cure her. But after beginning the process of purification and reading some Bible verses, Natalie turned to them and looked horrified and said, I can't hear you. So Dante hit the devil with a cross and Natalie claimed of the wall. But Dante and his friend were not afraid and kept confronting the devil. Suddenly the power went out. What the hell? The father instructed them to keep on praying. Then Natalie's face gets so scary. She became a real devil. My goodness, what's the matter? Strangely, she went to Annie, covered her eyes with her hands, but worms began to come out of her hands and said, That's be in. The father immediately intervened, trying to fight the devil in Jesus' name. Then Natalie ran under the bed. Oh gosh, sounds like the devil ambushed him to get rid of him. That seems to be the end of all of them here. But Annie took a chance and entered. What's going to happen? Will Natalie kill Annie? Somehow, Annie didn't use the Bible or cross against Natalie, and Natalie immediately came back to normal. Suddenly, she started to swallow her hair very strangely. So, Annie started reading Bible verses and with the help of the father. Finally, the devil left her body. What a poor girl. Later, when she arrived here, she found a coffin covered with a shroud. She uncovered the face of the body and found out that it was her mother. She heard something behind her turned around, and when she looked again in front of her, she found that her mother's body had disappeared. Quite a terrifying place. Suddenly, she grabbed her. Thank goodness, it was just a nightmare. The father says if the devil keeps on escalating, the girl may be taken to the Vatican, but Annie wants her to stay. So, the father said that if you want her to stay, you need to keep praying a lot. Annie seems to have some other plan. She agreed with this young man to bring the librarian away to access the secret files, so that she could learn its secrets in order to heal Natalie, and what she found was extremely terrible and bad. Here's a videotape of one of the victims of demonic possession telling the story of her recovery. The strange thing is that she removed part of her face, because she felt guilty and shamed about what happened to her. And this reminded her of the same feeling her mother had when she sometimes treated Annie badly. Then she took her own life at the end. Dr. Peters informed her that the guilt that came with her mother's suicide was due to the fact that she felt responsible for the suicide. So she should pull this feeling out to see the light so she can get rid of those bad memories. Then she went to visit Natalie and found that entry was restricted because she going to be transferred to the Vatican. She went straight to the father and told him the truth that 90% of uncurable cases eventually die. She therefore firmly objects to Natalie's transfer to the Vatican. Looks like she is an intelligent girl. She figured out why the victims died, as the devil dehumanizes them, making them feel that they are unworthy of the Lord's love. Then they end up committing suicide. So the solution is to help those possessed to fight for their humanity which means that the victims are the ones who abandon their souls to the devil unintentionally. The father strongly opposed her in her speech because he considered this dangerous to her and might turn her life into hell. As for her colleague, he fully supported her point of view. But above all, she should prove the truth of her words to the church. So he suggested that she go home with him and treat his possessed sister who had earlier been raped, pregnant and in front at her fetus death. And if she succeeded, this would be a great achievement in the centuries-old history of the church. When she arrived home, she began to draw a cross with holy water on her front and belly. So she awoke immediately after sleeping for three days. Then she told her that the devil was weak and that she needed to resist him to survive. After her brother read some Bible verses, suddenly the candles went out. Her belly got up and she started screaming. Gosh, what's that? Her belly's gonna explode? One of the fan blades broke and hit the mirror. So Amelia began to laugh strangely. Annie ordered her to focus with her voice and told her the devil targets religious people because our sin goes deeper. 
But the devil kept throwing fan blades trying to get rid of Annie. Well, Annie never gave up and continued to encourage her to build her confidence. And she asked him to read Psalm chapter 5. But the devil kept pressing on her belly trying to rip it open and kill her. She had to resist life. Thankfully, Amelia's belly gets smaller and the candles lit. Jesus, she was freed and healed. After they left the house, she told him a story similar to that of his sister, where Annie became pregnant when she was 15, and the nuns adopted her daughter after being forced out of the orphanage because of her pregnancy, but the guilt of abandoning her daughter haunts her even now. She was in her room until something appeared there. Is the devil that she drove out of that girl's soul is chasing her? Then she was summoned by Cardinal Matthew to tell her that Dante's sister committed suicide last night after trying to exorcise the evil spirit. Gosh, she got herself in buying. Her false recovery, according to the father, was nothing more than a deception of the devil to reduce the pressure on himself, and he ended up killing her as revenge. So, she withdrew and he returned to her old place with the nuns of St. Mary. Dante came to tell her that not only had a sudden relapse where the priest and the nurses were killed and she was taken into the catacombs under the main building, but she gave him this which belongs to her daughter. Means that Natalie and his daughter and the devil using her daughter in order to get her. They both went to the cell where her daughter was held. Suddenly the lights went off and the devil hit the father and Raymond too. Now, Annie is one on one with her possessed daughter. The devil wants to put pressure on her by telling her her daughter's tongue. You left me because your mother sacrificed herself for you. So, you don't deserve to be responsible for another life. But Annie confronted him by saying, But I can now, and wasn't scared of him. So, will he kill her as he did with others, or will her confrontation with him save her and her daughter? They fall together, but nothing is clear. Looks like the devil left her daughter's body and inhabited her body. She told him to run. Sounds like something awful is about to happen. The devil closed all the doors while Annie hangs in the air and screams. Dante ordered Natalie to run. She's little, so she managed to pass, but now her mom has become the devil. Will she kill Natalie? She again heard the voice of her daughter's spirit calling her. I'm with you. And remembered herself with her daughter. It seems that she is in a violent internal conflict with the devil and her torment seems very painful, so her end will be suicide if Dante doesn't save her. But her strong mind hasn't given up yet and she still resists. So she remembers all what she was told, she seems to have finally managed to survive. How difficult this challenge was, but she made it and went back with her daughter. Then she was promoted by the school and awarded a research fellowship in the Vatican. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.